Hi, I'm Winston, and I want you to learn about your TRS benefit, how it affects you and those that may depend on you financially. You'll also learn some things that will be beneficial to your career and your retirement planning overall. At the end, we'll give a few action steps to set you up for financial success during your career and in your retirement here in Georgia. Let's start by talking about your TRS benefit, the formula, and some things that you can do to supplement your TRS retirement benefit. Your TRS benefit is a 401A defined benefit plan, but most people refer to it as a pension plan. This means that your benefit is guaranteed for life. Also, there are some options that can leave a lifetime income to surviving beneficiaries, but we'll talk about that a little later. The formula that we use to determine your TRS retirement benefit is the number of years of creditable service that you have, which we multiply by 2%. We then take that percentage and multiply it by your high average salary, which is your highest two consecutive years of salary, wherever that falls in your career. We multiply all that together to get your initial benefit under the Max Plan A, and we do have some other options that you can choose from. How much will your TRS retirement be? Well, it depends on the number of years of service that you have when you retire. When you have at least 10 years of creditable service when you retire, that will give you 20% of your average salary per year. If you have 20 years of creditable service, that will give you 40% of your average salary. And if you have 30 years of creditable service, that will give you 60% of your average salary. Remember, you can contribute up to 40 years of creditable service towards your retirement benefit, and therefore you can have up to 80% of your income when you retire. Basically, the longer you work, the larger your retirement benefit is. One way TRS benefits you while you're working is that it reduces your taxable income during your career. For example, for somebody that makes $3,750, your TRS contribution amount would be $225 or 6% of that salary. Therefore, it reduces the taxable income to $3,525. Your TRS contributions are not taxed while you're working and are withdrawn before any taxable income is reported. Now, let's jump ahead to the future. When can you retire? You have three options. We have a service option, a disability retirement option, and an early service option. With the service retirement or normal service retirement, you can retire with 30 years of service at any age, or if you have at least 10 years of credible service and 60 years of age. You can retire with a disability retirement if you have at least 10 years of credible service, you're under age 60, and cannot continue to perform your current job duties. And lastly, we have an early service retirement option where you can retire if you have at least 25 but less than 30 years of service and you haven't reached age 60 yet. The early service retirement option, however, does have a permanent penalty that is applied to that benefit, which means your benefit is reduced. When it's time for you to retire, you will have several different options to choose from, including options to help your surviving beneficiaries. But you don't necessarily have to worry about selecting your retirement plan at this time. You choose your option of retirement within your last six months prior to your retirement date. As we've discussed, creditable service is an important part of the TRS formula that determines your retirement benefit. Let's talk about the three parts to your creditable service, membership service, purchase service, and your unused sick leave. You earn membership service by working in a full-time TRS covered position. If you work at least half the days of the month, then you get a full month's credit for that particular month. You can also make service purchases towards your TRS credit by transferring previously worked service into TRS. Most of those service purchase types are public sector work, either in or outside of the state of Georgia. Please check out their website, trsga.com, to see the full list of eligible types of service that you may be able to purchase. And lastly, you can use your sick leave towards your TRS credit. If you have at least 60 days of sick leave when you retire, you can apply that to add more credit towards your retirement benefit. This is important to remember as you continue your career. Keep an eye on your sick leave and save it if you're able to.
This chart illustrates how your days of sick leave are converted into months of creditable service. Remember, you have to have at least 60 days of sick leave in order to apply it towards your retirement benefit. If you do have 60 days of sick leave, that equals three months of service. At 70 days, that's four months of service, and every 20 days after that gives you another month of service. For TRS, nine months makes a full year. So if you have 170 days of sick leave, then that gives you a full year towards your retirement credit. In this instance, you can use your sick leave days to give you another year, and therefore you may be able to retire earlier than expected. You cannot use your sick leave towards vesting, which is having at least 10 years of service, and you cannot use it towards your age. Let's go over an example of how your sick leave credit could benefit you. Here, we have two employees, Tom and Mary. They're both 60 and worked as classroom teachers for 26 years, and both earned 12 and a half days of sick leave every year. Tom always used his available sick leave, but Mary rarely used hers. They both had the same however salary of $4,500 at the time of retirement. Now, since Tom didn't have any sick leave credit when he retired, we will multiply his 26 years of service by 2%, and therefore he's getting 52% of his high average salary to equal $2,343 per month. Mary, on the other hand, had 312 days of sick leave when she retired, and therefore that gave her an additional year and seven months of service. So instead of retiring with 26 years of service, she would end up with 27 years and seven months of service and therefore have a benefit of $2,500 as opposed to the $2,343 that Tom retired with. As you can see, your sick leave days can really benefit you in your retirement. Now, let's discuss the importance of vesting, your monthly benefit options, and how your beneficiaries are impacted by your choices. Being vested is important. Once you have 10 years of creditable service, you become vested and are therefore eligible for a retirement benefit at age 60. Throughout your career, you may make the choice to move out of state or take a break from education. If you decide to leave your TRS covered employer after you have 10 years of service, but prior to age 60, you have a couple of options. You could either A, leave your funds with TRS or B, withdraw those funds. If you leave your funds with TRS, you are still eligible for your retirement benefit at age 60. Your account will continue to accrue interest for four years after your last work date. After your fifth year, your account becomes inactive and therefore accrues no more interest. You can come back to your TRS covered employer prior to age 60 and continue to contribute more service towards your TRS benefit. If you decide to withdraw your funds from TRS, you are forfeiting your lifetime benefit. Here is an example of somebody that has the option to either leave their funds with TRS or withdraw them after terminating their employment. Sarah began teaching at age 25 and after 17 years decided to go for employment in the private sector. If she leaves her funds with TRS, she has the option to draw 34% of her salary at age 60. 34% of her high average salary, which is $5,761, equals $1,959 per month. If she decides to withdraw her funds at the time of separation, she can take her funds in a one-time lump sum payment, which would be $63,990 before taxes. But again, she is forfeiting her lifetime income. If she decides to come back to a TRS covered employer and wants that service credit to count towards her retirement, she would have to buy back that service prior to her retirement date. Now let's discuss the importance of beneficiaries. Whether you are actively employed, a terminated member, or you are retired, it is critical for TRS to know who your beneficiaries are because the information in your TRS account supersedes information in wills or other decrees. We ask that you set a reminder for two months after your start date to add your beneficiaries using your TRS online account. You can add your beneficiaries by going to www.trsga.com, creating an account, and designating your beneficiaries. 
To learn more about your beneficiaries, you may want to watch the beneficiary videos located on our multimedia page. Outside of TRS, there are other things that you will want to consider as far as your retirement plan is concerned. You may want to ask yourself, what are my financial goals? How will I achieve those goals? Have I established other retirement and investment accounts? How am I managing my expenses to achieve my financial goals? Am I contributing to Social Security? And will TRS be enough to meet those financial goals? As far as TRS is concerned, working longer in a TRS covered position is one of the best ways to maximize your retirement. The longer you work, the higher your monthly benefit will be. And remember, 40 years of service will give you 80% of your income guaranteed for the rest of your lifetime. On a personal note, you want to consider how and where you're spending your money by using a monthly budget. Although it's not the most fun thing to do, budgeting will allow you to see where your money is going every month. You may want to make sure that what's going out, meaning your expenses, are less than what's coming in, your income. Living well below your means will help you save and invest for your retirement. Here is a resource that was prepared by the Federal Reserve that can help to educate yourself further about financial literacy. And keep in mind there are things that you can also use to teach your students about financial literacy. At your earliest convenience, please check out their website to learn about everything from saving to budgeting to investing. You may have heard people say, you want to save for a rainy day. Well, they are just telling you to save for an emergency. And I'll tell you, emergencies will happen. Saving money is a learned habit, and the more you do it, the better you'll become at it. When I first started working right after college, it was very hard for me to save money. But I started by saving $25 every time I got paid in an online account. It was an automatic transfer, and over time I realized that it's not as bad as it seems, and I increased the withdrawal amount incrementally. You may want to look at your credit cards, revolving accounts, and loans just to see what interest rates you have and if there are any opportunities to lower those interest rates. Interest will either work for you or it'll work against you, depending on if you're borrowing money or if you're investing. If you're in a system that contributes into Social Security, that's one other thing that you'll use to plan for your retirement. But if not, you can save on your own with a defined contribution plan, such as a 401k, 403b, or 457b plan. With defined contribution plans, you will enroll through the selected vendors for your system and you choose how much you want to contribute. You'll decide which options are the best for you and you'll also determine the level of risk that you are comfortable with. The custodians of those accounts will guide you through that process and help select which options are best for you. Unlike your TRS account, defined contribution plans do fluctuate in value over time depending on the performance of the stock market. Compound interest is an example of interest that works for you and is an important part of your financial and retirement journey. Here is an example of how it works. Let's look at three different people. Someone who started at age 22, someone who started at age 32, and someone that started at age 42. They all contributed the same amount, which is $100 per month into an investment account. And their rate of return for every year was 5%. The person that started at age 22 amassed $135,842 when he retired at age 60. The person that started at age 32, they had $73,047 when they retired. And the person that started at age 42 had $34,921 when they retired. If you are over those ages that you saw there, there's never a time that's too late to start investing. If you are of a certain age, you can take advantage of catch-up contributions to invest even more into a 401k or a 403b. Please reach out to your HR department, your selected vendors and custodians, or your financial advisor to get more information about that. The United States Securities and Exchange Commission has a website that they've created for educators as well to talk about saving and investing for retirement. They also have information about scams to watch out for and things that are specifically designed for you as an educator. Please check out their website at your earliest convenience.
As mentioned, we want to summarize a few important topics. Here are four things you can do now to set yourself up for success. First, if you were recently hired, set a calendar reminder for two months after your start date to visit trsga.com and register your account and update your beneficiaries. If you're currently past two months from your start date, we encourage you to sign up for or log into your account today. Update your contact information and then set at least a yearly reminder to check in on your account. Two, get to know the basics of your retirement benefit. Review this video and go to our website. Click on Active Members, New Members, download the new member flyer and get familiar with the TRS benefit formula, credible service, unused sick leave, vesting, and the other topics we discussed today. On our website, you'll also be able to keep up with the pending legislation or other updates that may impact your TRS benefit. Three, there are a number of resources that are available to you. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, or follow us on social media and listen to the TRS podcast, Your Retirement in Focus, on Spotify and other podcast platforms. Be sure to talk to your HR department. They are a great resource as they are usually familiar with your retirement benefit, your career, and your salary. You may also want to consider hiring a licensed financial planner to look at not only your TRS benefit, but your Social Security and other investments to make sure that you are on track to save for your retirement. And lastly, we want to stress the importance of keeping your information up to date with us. Make sure your email and phone number are correct in your TRS account online. However, if you need to make an update on your address, please alert your employer. Again, take a moment to update your primary and secondary beneficiaries for your TRS benefit. This information is specific to your TRS retirement benefit and can make a world of difference to your family or estate. We hope this video has been beneficial to you as a new hire and new member of TRS, and we thank you for your service as a Georgia educator. As you begin to plan for your retirement, we encourage you to spend some time thoughtfully considering your options. Please go back to our website, our social media channels, or look at this video again just to make sure that you fully understand the great benefit that's available to you. Thank you.